Hi everybody, my name is Michael Levan, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a runbook. So first and foremost, what's a runbook? Well, it's a way to automatically deploy your code in Azure, whether it be a GET request or a POST request, whether it be stopping or starting a VM, or doing something that's completely outside of Azure. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is create an automation account. We'll go to Add. We'll give this a unique name. Pick our subscription and our resource group and our location. We'll need an Azure Run As account for this as well. We'll click the Create button. Let's go ahead and give our deployment a few minutes to finish. Okay, now that our deployment is complete, let's go to the resource. So now that we're at the resource, we can see a few different things. Overview, activity, access control, tags, diagnose and solve problems, configuration management, update management, process management. This is where we're going to want to go. So we're going to go to run books and then we'll go ahead and create our own run book. So we're going to name it MJL automation and the run book type will do PowerShell and then we'll click create. So once our run book is created, we can now start typing in some code here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some code in. The first set here is the authentication piece. And we'll get to that in a minute. And this is actually why we needed that run as account created for us. To authenticate to anything, let's say your AZ module, right? You need to have some sort of app running or app registration or service principal account or anything like that. So for ours, we're gonna be connecting to the tenant ID, the application ID and the cert for our run as account that was created. Here, we're gonna be getting any VM that's in the resource group dev2. And then for each VM in that resource group dev2, we're gonna stop the VM. So why are we doing this? Let's think about our scenario. Say you have a bunch of development VMs and you wanna be able to save some costs for your organization. Your development VMs don't actually need to run 24 seven. So we wanna be able to stop those VMs let's say every day, Monday through Sunday at 5 p.m. So we'll go ahead and save this and then we'll publish. So at this point, once we click view, we can see our code here and then we're gonna click start. Now let's actually give this a minute to fail and we'll go over the error and why this has failed. So as you can see, we have a few different errors here. So we have an error for get a ZVM and we'll look at this one because it's actually because of the same error. So it looks like it can't find this commandlet. The reason why I can't find the commandlet is because the module isn't imported. So just like in any PowerShell environment, you have to add a module, you have to import a module in. So we'll go to our run book and we'll see what modules are available. As we can see, the AZ module isn't available, only the Azure RM module is available. So we'll go to our modules gallery and We'll go ahead and we'll look up az dot, and we could see a few different resources here. If we go ahead and scroll down to the compute resource, which is with the one that we want because we want to manage VMs, we'll see that we have a dependency here. So for the purposes of saving us some time, because this can take about 10, 15 minutes to import the modules, I've already set up another automation account right here. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to install this module, AZ accounts, and then you'll also after that want to import the AZ compute module. And if we go to our modules over here, we'll actually see those two, AZ accounts and AZ compute, versus if we go back over here, we don't see AZ here, right? We just see Azure RM. So that's actually the only thing that's different here. So another thing that I want to point out is, if I go to my connections, by default, when you create a runbook, there is an Azure Run As automation connection created for you already. And that was the prompt that we got to create a Run As automation account. And again, as I said earlier, you'll need this for connection and authorization, authentication as well. So let's go back to overview and let's go to runbooks and let's go to stop VMs and let's take a look. As you can see here, this is the same exact code that we had in our other runbook. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this. Actually, before we start this, let's head over to our virtual machines. So as we can see in Dev2, that's our resource group that we're hitting, we have a 1VM that's running. So let's go back to our run book and let's click start. And let's give this a minute till we see our output here. While this is running, let's go take a look at our VM. Nothing's happening just yet. Let's go back to our run book again. No errors, which is a good sign. It's going to need a few more minutes here. And as we can see, no errors or warnings, and our script did run. So let's go back to our VM and let's refresh. And as you can see, the VM actually isn't running anymore. It's currently in the deallocating de stage and it's going to be stopped. So now we know our script works. So we don't want to have to run this ad hoc and manually every time. So let's think about scheduling. It's under resources. Let's go to schedules. There's no schedules currently. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new schedule. Name it daily stop VM. And we'll say that it starts tomorrow at 5 p.m. We want this reoccurring. Let's say once a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and there's no expiration. So now if we go to our schedule, wait a minute for this to create here. Okay, we now have a schedule and it's reoccurring Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or once a day, or we can go back to once a week, whatever you prefer. And that's how you create a scheduled runbook. Thanks for watching.